you guys take something out of the running game that you feel like you could build on moving forward? Like, what was the evaluation up front from that game? Was that a step forward in that? In that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know, with the production we had, you you have to have some uh, you know some good things happen to be able to move the ball like that. Obviously, we didn't finish well enough uh, with the ball in our hands and, and ball security wise, but I thought we were able to sustain some blocks and get into the second level a little bit. Saw some bursts from the backs, which was good. And uh, you know, there's definitely some things to build on. Anything help wise up front that contributed to that? You think, or just a chemistry thing? Uh, you know, I think you'd have to ask the individuals how they're feeling. Um, you know, it's been the same group out there for the most part. So, uh, you know, being able to, you know, spend some more time together and with those backs, I'm sure has helped. But, um, you know, we have a system here and we have a foundation that we believe in and, and we're going to stick with it. And I think, you know, some of that showed in uh, in New England in spurts. What are reasonable expectations for, for Julio if, if he's in there and, and back to add to what you've been missing? Well, he certainly brings a veteran presence, you know, and has seen a lot and, and has made big plays, um, you know, long uh, before getting here. And so I think, you know, his presence on the field gives us an ability to have a big target and, and someone that we can, uh, you know, add to the mix that we, we've been building on the last couple of weeks. You know, as far as realistic expectation, we don't really put numbers or, or snap count on anybody. So uh, we'll see how the game goes and, and the ebbs and flows of the game and how that shakes out. But uh, excited to, you know, potentially get him back in there. Like what Cody did for stepping in for him and uh, doing New England. Yeah, I mean, he's been such a, a steady and reliable guy for us. You know, he was having a really good camp before he got injured. Uh, and he's just one of those guys that you know where he's going to be. Uh, he knows exactly uh, where he fits in the picture and and does his best to you know find his way uh, open in man coverage as well. So you know excited about uh, having him in the mix and you know he's a guy that we're lucky to have around here. Um, speed, athleticism, size, those types of things get the attention. But how I guess important part of the equation is just being where you're supposed to be and be and the quarterback being able to trust you in that way. Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, there's there's two different types of coverages you have to defeat, right? There's man coverage where you have to have route craft and you have to have timing and and different releases and you know things of that nature to get open. And and then there's zone coverage where you have to understand where you fit in the big picture. Uh, and guys that understand, hey, me getting to this spot may not mean that I get the football, but it means that I, you know, help somebody else get open or I tie somebody down in his own defense. That is absolutely critical to success in the pass game, and I think we have some guys that that understand that. Todd, if Golden is um, active for, for you guys this week, what does he maybe bring that maybe you haven't had? And then just how have you seen him kind of come along uh, since coming? on with you guys before the bye? Yeah, certainly another guy with a lot of pelts on the wall, you know, and, and a lot of accomplishments in this game. And somebody I've respected his game for a long time, uh, you know, as an opponent. Uh, and seeing him come in here and just his, his love for the game and his competitive spirit and things like that, uh, you know, are very encouraging to, to add. And we'll see how it all shakes out with the rotation and, and availability and, and things like that. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, any, any guy you can add that loves the game as much as he does, you're doing, doing something right. When it comes to Ryan, and I know ideally you'd like to cut the turnovers down, but is it kind of a fine line? I mean, I imagine you don't want him to become hesitant and think too much or passing, but at the same time, Less turnovers, you know, how do you find that kind of balance, I guess, that fine line? Yeah, I firmly believe in just staying true to the read, you know, believe in uh, what your feet are telling you in terms of the timing of the concept and trust in the process. You know, and there's been a lot of different reasons for uh, the turnovers, and we've been working hard to eliminate those uh, and to iron out those wrinkles. Uh, I've told you up here before, Ryan is a diligent worker, and the game uh, means a lot to him. This team means a lot to him. Uh, and I've also told you that I don't think his stat lines tell him the story of his season. And so uh, we just want Ryan to stay committed to his process. That we'll never jerk the wheel around here. We got a lot of belief in him and trust that uh, we're going to be able to, uh, you know, get get back on track here soon. Well, I guess to follow on that, just important that he not think about, you know, overthink sometimes in, in those kinds of situations. Yeah, sometimes I, I relate the. Uh, quarterback position to golfing, right? If you're standing over a golf ball in a tee box and you're thinking, don't slice it, don't slice it, don't slice it, you're either going to slice it or duck hook it, you know? Um, and so you don't want any negative swing thoughts. And I think that holds true in the quarterback room as well. You know, you don't want any negative uh, throw thoughts as you're, you know, breaking the huddle or going through the game plan, you know? And, and so, uh, it, you know, Ryan's confidence in himself, which, which should be high, 
uh, you know, is going to be uh, absolutely paramount to us having the success we need. Where do you think the stat line is, is not reflective of the play? Uh, you know, I just I, I know that we're always looking for yardage and QB rating and, and all those sorts of things. And I, I think that uh, Ryan has played some efficient football and really good football distributing for us in stretches. And I think that there's been, uh, you know, some of those uh, turnovers or even lack of production uh, that doesn't fall on his shoulders. And, and uh, unfortunately, that hurts the stat line. So. Um, I guess what I mean uh, to unpack that a little bit further is that Ryan's the leader of this team. We have a lot of belief in him uh, pulling the trigger at the quarterback position for us, and you know we, we think he's uh, he's done a, a nice job with a lot of what he's been asked to do. There are some some of the top level guys missing. You know, AJ, Julio, Derek. A lot of the responsibility, I'm sure, would be placed on him to make plays. Uh, how can he just be someone to to elevate the game of, of everyone around him? Yeah, again, I think just uh, you know trusting the process and and doing your job one snap at a time, uh, you know, just gives us an ability to go operate without expectation. You know, you you don't want to set a standard and say, okay, we got to have this kind of production out of this position or this kind of production out of this position. You go out and you operate on a play by play basis, and if you do your job each play and stack uh, all those up, I believe at the end of the game it ends up being enough. You know, in terms of getting some playmaking ability back. Uh, you know, other guys have had the ability to make plays as well, and we've seen that in spurts. So we just need to become more consistent as an offense altogether, and I think uh, you know he'll contribute to that. You said Ryan's confidence should be high with where is. Do, do you think that his confidence has been shaken? I do not. I do not. No. So you haven't. Do you have you at any time, even as a coach and other stops or whatever, thought about that in terms of a quarterback? Like had to be like, hey, let's. Let's work on this a little bit, rebuild confidence. Or is he just a guy who is different in that way and you, just, you don't feel like that's something that you need to? Yeah, I think each quarterback's different, you know. I think each quarterback that I've worked with is different. Everybody's got their own personality. Coaches have their own personalities. And sometimes you need to build a guy back up a little bit or you need to, you know, let him see a couple of balls completed or, you know, whatever the, the case may be. Um, but, you know, Ryan's, uh, you know, Ryan's done a nice job of just – operating in the context of what we asked him to do and you know there's certainly some throws he wants back and you know that, that I think that's true for 31 other teams uh, you know but we're uh, we're excited to have him excited about this opportunity we have for these uh, next five games and whatever else we earn uh, you know going into the bye that that maybe the last week or two he thought the team was playing with a little less speed than, than maybe earlier in the season Wonder from your point of view if, if you had noticed that you know on the offense and and maybe maybe just what like an extra split second might mean now that they're a little fresher and you know yeah I, you know I think um, I think anytime you're getting into that long of a stretch uh, you know without a break um, you know there's a chance that you're going to see some of that and I think there's certainly some opportunities we've missed at keeping the pressure on the defense and playing as fast as we can play. Um, and, and, you know, there have been some moving parts throughout that as well and, and getting some of that timing down. And I mentioned in man coverage, particularly in the pass game, you know, part of getting open is that timing element of things. And so, uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to uh, make sure that we're demanding the most out of guys uh, from a speed and, and timing standpoint. So, you know, always looking to improve. Give you time to maybe do some extra self scouting or maybe some Id identify some areas where you can improve uh, here down the stretch. Yeah, certainly took a dive into things um, offensively and I, I took a peek at myself from a play calling standpoint, but I try to do that on a weekly basis as well. That's built into you know my week weekly routine is trying to make sure I'm not getting too predictable in one area or the other. Uh, you know, that's all part of the process, but yeah, the bye week gave us a little bit more time to do that. Offense has been, and, and do you foresee maybe making any changes? And I know you're always trying to think of creative things down there specifically. Yeah, it's been a, a little streaky. You know, it's been a little streaky, and I, I think uh, a few weeks back we we had a conversation out here about that and said, you know, all it takes is a little bit of momentum, and I think we rattled off, you know, six or seven out of eight, um, you know, in the red zone, you know, in that stretch, and so. Hopefully we can get back to that kind of groove. Um, you know, we've we've played a couple of pretty talented red zone defenses as well, and so that always plays a factor into it. But uh, we set a high standard about the red zone around here, and and should, and uh, you know, I anticipate us getting back to more positive outcomes. Like for a, for a particularly good red zone target, some guys just seem to excel in the red zone more more than others. What 
What's that difference? Yeah, I think just having that football IQ, understanding what they're trying to accomplish defensively, um, you know, whether it be defeating man coverage, using picks and rubs and getting open that way, uh, you know, or understanding where maybe a safety might be pushing because there's less vertical distance for him to cover and, and so he can, you know, freelance a little bit more horizontally. Uh, guys that understand that uh, have an a innate ability or a feeling, a sense of timing of, of when to get open for the quarterback. So uh, that ultimately falls on me as a teacher, right, is to show them the big picture of things. Uh, but those guys that just tend to have that innate ability uh, seem to excel and get a lot of red zone targets.